FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz, and it is September 26th, 2017, just about at the end of the quarter, and no quarter would be complete without having Gerald Salenti of TrendsResearch.com on the show. Hey, Gerald, welcome back. How are you? I'm fine. Thanks for having me on, Kerry. Always, always. So so what do you see happening here in the world right now? I mean, it looks like Mother Nature is really out to do us in almost, doesn't it? <laughs> well, you know, one of the things, I had never called myself a futurist. I've been in this business now going on 40, it's almost 40 years. And I always said I was a trend forecaster. And I said, nobody could predict the future. There are too many wild cards. And Mother Nature is one of them. Yeah. Nobody could predict what's going to happen. And the other wild card, of course, is either man-made or made by Mother Nature. And right now, you know, one of the wildest wild cards is the Trump card. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, it, everything's up for grabs. Very interesting. Here we are at the end of September. Mm -hmm. Go back to the beginning of September. Go back to all the major business media. And you will read one after another how the volatility in the stock markets was supposed to happen in September. Right. And September is normally a very volatile month. Well, it hasn't happened like that. And people that have been listening to me for many years know that, you know, I'm no fan of Trump's. So I didn't vote for either of them. Neither Clinton or Trump represent my values. And so I call things the way they are, not the way the way I want them to be, what I like, what I wish for, it's what is. And I, we did a 180 on the economy, our economic forecast after Trump got elected on stock markets. We said this rally was real. And we predicted him a winner in our May 2016 mm. Trends Journal. And mm. no one was saying that. Mm. And we also were the first to come out days after the Trump rally that this thing is real. And it's real because of the perception of what's going to happen and what is happening at a number of different levels. And again, it's not good or bad, right or wrong. The fact is he's, he's giving uh, business, particularly big business, more and more free rides to do what they want. And so with the uh, tax uh, changes that are about to take place that they're talking about, if they do infrastructure repair, and he's already deregulating, making it easier for mining companies and others you know, to do things that weren't allowed before in places they couldn't go. So you're going to see equity markets, we believe they're not going to crash, but we do see a correction, a correction of about 10% or so, but no crash. And it's only natural that they correct at some point. And the correction will come because of a wild card, again, whether man-made or made by Mother Nature. Yeah, well, it, it's really interesting to see how things have worked out. You know that old saying, stocks climb on a wall of worry. They've been climbing on a wall of worry now for nearly 10 years, right? And how, uh, so, uh, and you know, you just reminded me of that old Yogi Berra phrase, uh, you know, prediction is really tough, uh, really hard, especially about the future, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, look, we got it wrong. You know, we, we thought the markets were going to crash again in 2012. Mm -hmm. And But again, tracking trends is an understanding of where we are, how we got here, and where we're going. On the how we got here level, there was never such thing as quantitative easing. There was never such thing as zero interest rate, negative interest rate policy. So you you forecast on what on what the history used to be. I mean, they didn't teach you about quantitative easing when I went to school with economics 101. You know, stuff never existed. Mm. You know, and the, and the only thing that's floated the markets is the cheap money. End of story. Period. Paragraph. Right, and that that's always been the case. I mean, the old formula of watching the Fed cut rates and watch the stock market go up. Uh, I, at one time I thought it was antiquated, but, but uh, over the past 10 years, what have we seen? Actually nine got years, it. right? Yep. No, you got it. No. I mean, this year already, you know, the market's up 11%, but not yeah. gold is up though 13%. Mm -hmm. And that's surprising as well. A lot to look at, by the way, this whole Bitcoin issue that's going on. Mm. The banksters don't want it at all. And that's mm -hmm. why you have people like Jamie Dimon coming out and calling it a fraud because mm -hmm. it's making banking useless. 
And uh, so they're, they're going to be attacking it as well. And then he has the nerve to say, you know, that with central banks, they legalize currencies, fiat currency, central banks. A bunch of private banks, to central banks. Yeah. I mean, everybody that listens to your show knows that, you know, Federal Reserve is as federal as Federal Express. Right. That's a private bank. You know, but they're make so they're going after this because it's part of the populist movement, even on a larger level, and that people don't believe in it in the fiat currencies. I mean, look at China, the debt to GDP ratio of like 300. You know, mm-hmm. Come on, Japan 250. I mean, just keep these Ponzi schemes going. So now what happened, this is important. In China, within just three days from now, they're going to be um, banning Bitcoin. Right. Closing down the exchanges. It's not going to stop people from doing it, but what it's going to do, it's going to lessen the traffic. But already, when Bitcoin really took its big boost, it was because back in 2016, early, the Chinese yuan was getting crushed. So the Chinese people didn't want to see their currency so devalued and keep losing money. That's when they went into Bitcoin, and that's what initially drove the prices up. These are facts. Right. Now, what happened is... China kept putting restrictions on, now only about 15% of Bitcoin trading comes from China. But here's the big story. We believe China is putting a ban on Bitcoin because they're gonna begin to devalue the Yuan. Their exports are down. Their debt level is skyrocketing. S&P just downgraded their credit rating last week. Mm -hmm. Barely made the news. Yeah, I saw that, yeah. So they're going to devalue the yuan because they need to increase exports. What does that mean? It means the Chinese are going to, if they can't buy cryptocurrencies, they may begin to buy gold. Right. Well, that's an interesting uh, thesis there. And and I see a lot to recommend it. Uh, but, the, but the ones who really want to buy it are going to be able to. Do you think they will criminalize possession of Bitcoin? That would be a really they interesting they thing. May. They may do that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yep. you know, the, the difference why the Chinese, why the Chinese economy goes the way it does and the United States economy goes the way it does. It, it, it one's outside in and the other's inside out. Our our government is is uh, pressured by the outside forces, the multinationals, the corporations, the banksters. In China, it's inside out. They're it, man. The banksters, the corporations, it's the government. Yeah. There's no, there, there's, there, there's no front. And mm-hmm. so they're just, they're, and, they, and China is in the business of business, while America is in the business of war. Mm-hmm. So China's all they're, they're focused on business. They don't, they don't, they don't, they're not trying to stop, you know. They don't send troops to Somalia, Sudan, Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, Syria, you know, they're not doing that trip. Yeah. And so they're, they're, they're concentrated on making money. Mm. Mercantilism, they seem to have a mercantilistic economy kind of, kind of modeled on the uh, European powers and the U.S. to a lesser extent back in the uh, 17 and 1800s. Yeah, well put. Excellent, 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 excellent analogy. Yep, you're the first person I heard say that. Really? That's exactly what they're doing. Yeah, it's exactly what they're doing. Yeah, it's a, it's a, yeah, and uh, and that's all they're they're concerned about. And and China's buying up the world. Yeah. I mean, so, and and when you look at you know when, when you look at it you know I mean, we got 1.3 billion people we got the point three here. And mm-hmm. when I talk about cryptocurrencies and the thing about China, I mean people don't use cash anymore. They don't use credit cards. They use apps on their smartphones. Pep, it's yeah. bought, paid for, and exchange. So what happens is because people don't have a connection to the currency of the realm, there is no in God we trust. You're not dealing, you're only dealing in air. So if you could deal with government air, you could deal with a crypto air. And again, part of the cryptocurrency trend is also a big part of this populist movement, which has so many, so many uh, countries are moving away from centralization. And more and more younger people want nothing to do with the the the, uh, the big government. So there, there's a lot of opportunity. We there, again, the bottom line, the weakness of cryptocurrencies. To make it clear, is that the governments could do anything they want, anytime to ban them, and you're shafted. And number two, for me, I'd rather hold, possess gold, than some currency in a cloud. And but and then on the other hand. If they're if you're in in a war zone and that could happen at any time, 
and you got to get out of the country, you know, your cryptocurrencies go with you and it's very easy. You know, that's where the cloud really works. So there are, there are the ups and downs of it, but we don't see it going away for quite a while. And again, it depends on how governments crack down on it. But Japan, for example, is perfectly legal and, and it's very easily done. That's why you have so much traffic coming out of Japan and South Korea on the, on the Bitcoin front, cryptocurrency front. Interesting. Well, you know, there's like over a, well over a thousand cryptocurrencies. A lot of them are what I call kleptocurrencies, right? Uh, they right. just exist to defraud uh, erstwhile investors or speculators. They're not really investors. When you're buying that stuff, it's pure speculation. As bad as our security laws are, Gerald, it's still a lot better than the disclosure that you get in an initial coin offering. I mean, you don't oh, yeah. know no, anything. I agree with you. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Oh yeah. And and people just want to play this, and and maybe maybe Chinese are playing it a little less. But when they start seeing big gains, you know, it's in the Chinese DNA. They're they're major league gamblers. Just go to Vegas, any gambling center. It's all Asians there, and. Um, you know, that, I mean, that's a fact. Look at Macau. It's it's far, far larger, more profitable than Las Vegas. And, oh, well, you know, way more. Yeah it's, yep. it, yeah, it's not even in the same. That's where all the U.S. casino chains are making their money now in Macau. So so as a gambling mechanism and and then, you know, bear markets and bull markets in Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, you know, in a stock market, it could take uh, months and years for these bears and bulls to develop and reach their peak. In Bitcoin, it happens like over a weekend. Uh, I've never seen anything quite like it uh, in my life where things can just escalate and then crash and then go back up two weeks later making new highs. I mean, the I know. time compression with these markets, Gerald, are like nothing we've ever seen like in our nothing. lives before. Nothing. Yeah. And again, you go back, go back to the beginning of the month, go to the mainstream media. The, the, the big correction was coming this month. It was, there was no question about it, one after right. another. You look at our Trends Journal that just came out um, uh, two weeks ago, and we had all the negative comments from every, just about every major uh, um, business source about mm -hmm. how the markets, and this is going, this is, not even now, was, you know, we wrote about it, you know, before the September began and how, um, you know, the, there was going to be a great correction. And we're going back from January, from mm -hmm. January, they were saying there was going to be a great correction. And with right. the George Soros of the world. And we kept saying, nope, don't see it. 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 Now we see it. We see a 10% correction. And here's some uh, talking about Bitcoin. I just want to see what the price will be. You know, so it's, it's rocketing back up there toward uh, 4000 But here's the headline. Mm -hmm. ECB Central Bank President Mario Draghi. Bank mm -hmm. has no power to regulate Bitcoin. Really? <laughs> That's the headline. That's pretty big news, but they had no power to to do quantitative easing either, and yet they they found it in their arsenal, didn't they? <laughs> How about zero interest rate policy? You put money yeah. in the bank, and you got to pay for it to put it there. I mean, it makes perfect sense. Oh yeah, you know. <laughs> I mean, you know, why should anybody you know question anything like that? And how about a look at the Bank of Japan? You know, mm -hmm. I like you, Kerry. We've been talking a while now, I've known you a bit. Yeah. I got a ten year bond for you to buy. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, in ten years when you when you cash it in, I'm gonna give you less money than you loaned me because I like you so much. Hey, why why don't the banks do that with us where we could pay back less than we borrow? <laughs> yeah, that'd be great, huh? <laughs> yeah, it because doesn't work. Be gangsters. Yeah, you know, nothing's really changed since the days, you know, when Jesus Christ chased the money changers out of the temple with a whip. <laughs> so when people say to me, you know, Mr. Salenti, you get angry and raise your voice, I say, Listen, take it easy, man. If Christ could become vicious and pick up a whip <laughs> to whip these people, I could raise my voice. Yeah, I think you're entitled. Hey, so, you know, I just remember my grandparents, uh, uh, they never trusted banks after the Great Depression. Yep. For yep. years, I mean, 20, 30 years, Gerald, to, to the yep. 70s, 40 years. Yep. And 
you know, like the skepticism towards banks seems to have evaporated, uh, except for people like you and I and you listening now. Everybody else thinks these banks are, are like uh, the Pope, infallible, you know? Well, it's like, the, but people lost their courage in this country. Mm. I mean, look what's going on with the wars. Mm -hmm. I mean, here we are in Afghanistan now, 16 years, no end in sight. 9-11 just happened. You know, we do trends in the news broadcasts each weekday night as part of the subscription to the Trends Journal. Mm. And I covered it on 9-11. Mm -hmm. Not one story in the toilet paper of record, the New York Times. They call themselves the paper of record, being the propaganda and hatred that they keep selling. I call them the toilet paper. <laughs> Not one mention. The only mention was an editorial. Uh, uh, excuse, yeah, uh, yeah, an editorial. And the editorial was how they discovered who this woman was who got killed in 9-11 by her ashes. Mm. That, that was, was the, the only story. Nothing in the New York Times, nothing in the Wall Street Journal. So the, the people in this country are tuned out. You know, I, I do interviews all over the world. They ask me, oh, Mr. Salenti, you know, with the, with the, the federal debt now at $20 trillion, what are the people saying? That's what are the people saying. They're saying, how come the guy didn't kneel during the Pre Pledge of Allegiance or something like that? They don't, yeah. they don't have no clue what's going on. Mm -hmm. they, they have no clue at all. The people are totally in the mass are totally, totally tuned out of what's going on and how it's going to affect them. And that's why we put out a magazine that we put out. It's the only place where you can read history before it happens. You know, we put the facts out and the motto of the magazine is think for yourself. You know, not, there's no advertisements in our magazine, 50 pages, right. 60 pages, not one advertisement. Uh, you raise so a, we're not yeah. beholden to anybody. You raise a really great point of thinking for yourself critical thinking, independent thinking. Now, it's not something that really could ever be, uh, you know, taught in school, but it was something that, uh, that was strived for under the old liberal arts model of education. Like you read all those classics and you studied, well, once upon a time, Greek and Latin. And, you know, when, once you got enough of that stuff rolling around in, in your head, uh, it just kind of kicks in. And yet, uh, what I would call critical thinkers, and it's irrespective of of your views, right? Irrespective of your political yeah, views. Yeah, your view has nothing to do yeah. with it. It's you go to you go to a doctor. You want the diagnosis. You don't care if he's right. black, white, green, yellow, male, female, what religion. I could care less. Mm -hmm. I want the best diagnosis I could get, yeah. and that's what we do. You know, I didn't. I I will. You know, I went to college. You know, I'm liberal arts. Where I really learned to think for myself was so my father, man, so rest in peace. Mm -hmm. Every time I'd be he'd be driving along or at a dinner table anywhere and I'd be shooting my mouth off he'd look at me and in Italian he'd say to me Papagallo <laughs> parrot he says yeah. stop repeating what everybody else is saying and think for yourself <laughs> in a very disgusted way and looking at me you know yeah and I realized you know now that of course today they get my father arrested for doing something like that oh god but anyway the um what, what I learned was that before I opened my mouth I better have the facts mm-hmm that's and that's point. what we do. Everything we write is fact-based. You mm. want to argue with the facts? Fine. Do that. These are the available facts. These are generally accepted as, as accurate. These are the facts. Based on these facts, this is where we see it going. Mm -hmm. And again, this is only where we see it going. You think for yourself. Make up your own mind. Yeah, of course. Of course, that's the, the way it's supposed to be. You draw your own conclusions and and you, you're responsible for the results, right? It's yep, nobody yep, else's yep. fault but you. But That's uh, right. somehow uh, we've gotten away from that model here, and it's come down to uh, you know this groupthink, this massive groupthink, which is just destroying uh, destroying civilization. You know, it really? Oh is. yeah. No, no. It's it. There. It, it, what? It's civilization. I mean, look what's going on. The mass murder going on in these wars, drone mm -hmm. strikes, kill 17 suspected military, suspected? Mm -hmm. You mean there's no judge, jury, or trial? Now, we suspected them, so we killed <laughs> them. And if anybody got in their way, it's too bad. You're in the wrong place at the wrong time. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on. Look what's going on. There's no morality left. No. No. A sad, sad commentary. So, 
price of gold. Uh, what do you think? Uh, what's what's the trend yeah, there? It's, well, it, again, it's it's going to depend on interest rates. Period. Paragraph. And if they raise interest rates, which is seventy percent shot now in December, uh, twenty five basis points, yeah, it's going to knock gold down a little bit, but not a lot. Because when you look at when they raise interest rates four times in ten years, mm. you know what, what are you? What are we at? Like one one between one and one point two five. That's no, that's no interest rate. Right. So what, and when you, and when, then when you account inflation, even the phony numbers they use, you know, over 10 years, you know, you're only at 16, 18% inflation, 20%. So interest rates are still really in negative territory. So gold is going to respond on interest rates and the strength of the dollar. And right now the strength of the dollar is weak. So as long as the dollar stays weak, interest rates stay where it is, gold is where it is. For gold to move higher, it has to break over $1,400 an ounce as we see it. And, I, and it hasn't done that in a number of years. And what we're saying is it's not like 1405, it has to be like 1480, 1460, you know, 1450, 1470, you know, for a couple of weeks. And then once it stabilizes over that number, we see it spiking to the 2000s nonstop. Really? We, we see a Bitcoin spike, that kind of thing. Mm hmm. And it's just a matter of time there, huh? We believe so, yeah. I mean, you know, I don't give financial advice, but you know, I, I, I buy gold. Yeah, me neither. Never give financial advice. I just no. uh, present the uh, viewpoints of our guests as well as mine on occasion, and you go from there. Because uh, in the end, it's just like the hurricane we had here in Florida. It's either you make the decision to stay and tough it out white white knuckle it out or you get the hell out and uh, come back and hopefully hopefully it wasn't as bad as you thought yep yeah yeah and again it's all it's on you're on your own yeah yeah and that's uh, that's the illusion of government that of all oh, of the illusions what a joke that's what the worst part they care what about you <laughs> they really show care about one, you show me one thing that the government has done effectively look at our rotten stinking moronic education system Oof. one of the most expensive in the world and mm. we don't even win place or show in oecd numbers compared to other countries nope. and they rape us with this property tax crap so we could pay the pensions of these people that just keep doing this lousy job look what, if our education system worked at let's say 30 percent you think the country would be in the problems that we have now? <laughs> no. Well, you know, it's uh, it's really been an abdication. Uh, well, maybe the government should have never been responsible for it in the first place, right? I agree. I agree. Yeah. I, and, and the other thing I'm totally against are these non-for-profits. Mm. I got to work. I got to pay. I, gotta, I, gotta, I put out a very valuable socially... Uh, 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 upscale magazine in terms of helping people. You know, I don't ask for tax breaks. I got mm. some guy who plays president of a college or a guy that's a coach on a college team making millions of bucks, and these clowns don't pay the, 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 their nonprofit organizations. But yet, you know, we got to pick their garbage up police force, everything, the whole infrastructure. And, and this is a ripoff. This, and, and for religions, too. You yeah. know, whatever you believe in, knock yourself out, man. You, let's, well, you pay your taxes. What, are there 300 different religions in this country? Yeah. And everybody believes in only my God is the real God. And I'm not paying taxes because of that. You pay <laughs> your taxes like everybody else. Yeah. Oh, agreed. Agreed. All right. Well, hey, Gerald, do you have any events coming up in the near future? No, 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 not for a while. And okay. uh, but again, the Trends Journal is available. The new one just came out. Market crash, market correction. But it's beyond just that. It's you know so many other trends. We look at hundreds, and it's again, it's the only magazine in the world where you're going to read history before it happens, and it's only ninety nine dollars a year. Yeah, and if you don't like it, bargain. there's a money back guarantee. You have nothing to lose. Yeah, that's a bargain. Well, I always look forward to it. It's a great publication, doing uh, good things there, Gerald. Uh, hey, email us, kl at kerrylutz.com. Twitter feeds at Kerry Lutz. Gerald, we'll talk to you again real soon, and let's see what happens with that stock market. Okay, thanks a lot, Kerry, and thanks for all that you're doing. 
FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz, and it is September 26th. 2017, just about at the end of the quarter, and no quarter would be complete without having Gerald Salenti of TrendsResearch.com on the show. Hey, Gerald, welcome back. How are you? I'm fine. Thanks for having me on, Kerry. Always, always. So so what do you see happening here in the world right now? I mean, it looks like Mother Nature is really out to do us in almost, doesn't it? <laughs> well, you know, one of the things. I had never called myself a futurist. I've been in this business now going on 40, it's almost 40 years. And I always said I was a trend forecaster. And I said, nobody could predict the future. There are too many wild cards and mother nature is one of them. Yeah. And nobody could predict what's going to happen. And the other wild card, of course, is either man-made or made by mother nature. And right now, you know, one of the wildest wild cards is the Trump card. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it, everything's up for grabs. Very interesting. Here we are at the end of September. Go mm -hmm. back to the beginning of September. Go back to all the major business media, and you will read one after another how the volatility in the stock markets was supposed to happen in September. Right. And September is normally... Let's climb on a wall of worry. They've been climbing on a wall of worry now for nearly 10 years, right? And how, uh, so, uh, and you know, you just reminded me of that old Yogi Berra phrase, uh, you know, Prediction is really tough, uh, really hard, especially about the future, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, look, we got it wrong. You know, we, we thought the markets were going to crash again in 2012. Mm -hmm. And But again, tracking trends is an understanding of where we are, how we got here, and where we're going. On the how we got here level, there was never such thing as quantitative easing. There was never such thing as zero interest rate, negative interest rate policy. So you you forecast on what on what the history used to be. I mean, they didn't teach you about quantitative easing when I went to school with economics 101. You know, stuff never existed. Mm. You know, and the, and the only thing that's floated the markets is the cheap money. End of story. Period. Paragraph. Right, and that that's always been the case. I mean, the old formula of watching the Fed cut rates and watch the stock market go up. Uh, I, at one time I thought it was antiquated, but, but uh, over the past 10 years, what have we seen? Actually nine got years, it. right? Yep. No, you got it. No. I mean, this year already, you know, the market's up 11%, but not yeah. gold is up though 13%. Mm -hmm. And that's surprising as well. A lot to look at, by the way, this whole Bitcoin issue that's going on. Mm. The banksters don't want it at all. And that's why you have people like Jamie Dimon coming out. Their debt level is skyrocketing. S&P just downgraded their credit rating last week. Mm -hmm. Barely made the news. Yeah, I saw that, yeah. So they're going to devalue the yuan because they need to increase exports. What does that mean? It means the Chinese are going to, if they can't buy cryptocurrencies, they may begin to buy gold. Right. Well, that's an interesting uh, thesis there, and and I see a lot to recommend it, uh, but, the, but the ones who really want to buy it are going to be able to. Do you think they will criminalize possession of Bitcoin? Uh, that would be a they really may. interesting they thing. May. They may do that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yep. You know, the, the difference why the, Chinese, why the Chinese economy goes the way it does and the United States economy goes the way it does, it, 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 one's outside in and the other's inside out. Our, our government is, is uh, pressured by the outside forces, the multinationals, the corporations, the banksters. In China, it's inside out. They're it, man. The banksters, the corporations, it's the government. Yeah. There's no, there, 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 there's no front. And mm -hmm. so they're just, they're, and, they, and China is in the business of business, while America is in the business of war. Mm -hmm. So China's, all they're, they're focused on business. They don't, they don't, they're not trying to stop, you know, they don't sending troops to Somalia, Sudan, 
Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, Syria, you know, they're not doing that trip. Yeah. And so they're, they're, they're concentrated on making money. Mm. Mercantilism. They seem to have a mercantilism. And calling it a fraud because mm -hmm. it's making banking useless. And uh, so they're, they're going to be attacking it as well. And then he has the nerve to say, you know, that with central banks, they legalize currencies, fiat currency, central banks. A bunch of private banks, they're central banks. Yeah. I mean, everybody that listens to your show knows that, you know, Federal Reserve is as federal as Federal Express. Right. That's a private bank. You know, but they're making, so they're going after this because it's part of the populist movement, even on a larger level, in that people don't believe in it in the fiat currencies. I mean, look at China, a debt to GDP ratio of like 300. Mm -hmm. now, come on, Japan 250. I mean, just keep these Ponzi schemes going. So now what happened, this is important. In China, within just three days from now, they're going to be um, banning Bitcoin. Right. Closing down the exchanges. It's not gonna stop people from doing it, but what it's going to do it's going to lessen the traffic. But already, when Bitcoin really took its big boost, it was because back in 2016 early, the Chinese yuan was getting crushed. So the Chinese people didn't want to see their currency so devalued and keep losing money. That's when they went into Bitcoin, and that's what initially drove the prices up. These are facts. Right. Now, what happened is... China kept putting restrictions on, now only about 15% of Bitcoin trading comes from China. But here's the big story. We believe China is putting a ban on Bitcoin because they're gonna to begin to devalue the yuan. Their exports are down. They're a very volatile month. Well, it hasn't happened like that. And people that have been listening to me for many years know that you know, I'm no fan of Trump's. I didn't vote for either of them. Neither Clinton or Trump represent my values. And so I call things the way they are, not the way the way I want them to be, what I like, what I wish for, it's what is. And uh, we did a 180 on the economy, our economic forecast after Trump got elected on stock markets. We said this rally was real. And we predicted him a winner in our May 2016 Trends Journal. And no one was saying that. Mm -hmm. And we also were the first to come out days after the Trump rally that this thing is real. And it's real because of the perception of what's going to happen and what is happening at a number of different levels. And again, it's not good or bad, right or wrong. The fact is he's, he's giving uh, business, particularly big business, more and more free rides to do what they want. And so with the uh, tax uh, changes that are about to take place that they're talking about, if they do infrastructure repair, and he's already deregulating, making it easier for mining companies and others you know, to do things that weren't allowed before in places they couldn't go. So you're going to see equity markets, we believe they're not going to crash, but we do see a correction, a correction of about 10% or so, but no crash. And it's only natural that they correct at some point. And the correction will come because of a wild card, again, whether man-made or made by Mother Nature. Yeah, well, it, it's really interesting to see how things have worked out. You know that old saying, stock